Welcome back to Book Break. Today I want to know what is your favourite weird and wonderful non-fiction book that opened your eyes to a whole new area? Because I think that's what's so great about non-fiction, is sometimes it's perfect for researching an area you're already really interested in, but other times you might come across a non-fiction book about a topic you'd never even thought about before. And actually that just happened to me. So I'm here today filming at Daunt Books in Marlebone, one of London's most beautiful bookshops, and they've got a fantastic non-fiction selection. And I was just having a quick look at their shelves before starting filming and even though I'd already picked the books before that I wanted to tell you about I ended up grabbing a few more off their shelves that just looked too intriguing. So I really want to know your favourite weird and wonderful niche non-fiction books that showed you a whole new topic you never thought about before and in the meantime I'm going to give you a few of our recommendations. So that feeling of coming across a whole new topic that you'd never even thought about before is exactly the feeling that I got when I picked up A Place for Everything by Judith Flanders. So this is The Curious History of alphabetical order, which is so cool, because alphabetical order is something that we use literally every day, but we never even think about it. But think how lost we would be without it. For example, in a bookshop. So library bookshelves used to be arranged by hierarchy instead, so you would have the Bible first, then theology more generally, and pagan authors would be all the way down the bottom. And even the chapters of this book are in alphabetical order, so you have A for antiquities, through G for government, all the way to Y for Y2K. Really exciting book. Something else that we're confronted with every day but never really think about is knowledge itself. How do we know this stuff? And particularly before the internet, how did these ideas build and reach us? So in The Map of Knowledge, Violet Mollet takes the ideas of three scientists from antiquity, Galen, Euclid and Ptolemy, and traces their ideas through thousands of years and literally through the cities that their ideas travelled through. It's such a cool idea and she's done so much research and it really just makes you realise the fact we have so much shared intellectual heritage is incredible. And where do we keep all that knowledge but in our brains? Something else that we never really think about until they act out. So the author of this book, Oliver Sacks, was a neurologist, and this is a collection of stories of some of his patients with various neurological disorders, including the title of the book, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat. So it's fascinating learning the different ways our minds can play tricks on us, and it's also a really moving book, thinking about the people throughout the years who've been dismissed as being mad, when actually they have incredible talents for art or maths, it's just that their brains are working in slightly unexpected ways. And one more medical one, Quackery, A Brief History of the Worst Ways to Cure Everything, by Lydia Kang and Nate Peterson. So this is a look at all of the terrible medicines we have genuinely tried over the years. So we all know about leeches, but did you know that doctors used to prescribe morphine for crying babies? And instead of Viagra, people used to take strychnine, as in, yes, the thing in rat poison. So this book is a mix of things that doctors actually prescribed old wives tales that people used to believe in and some just straight up scams. It's really funny and just completely unbelievable at some points the things people used to fall for. Hindsight is everything. So the next few books are going to take us travelling the world a bit, which is perfect because one of the really cool unique things about Dawn Books is that this whole section is arranged by country. So for the next book I'm going to go up there through Britain. So first we're going up to the English-Scottish border where there was once an independent territory called the Debatable Land. And this was once the bloodiest region in Great Britain. It was constantly being fought over by Henry VIII, Elizabeth I and James V. And in the end, after the Union of Crowns, it was brought under British control. And the entire population were either slaughtered or deported, which was charming. So this is a book by Graham Robb which explores the history of this now rather forgotten piece of land. All the way back from a time when England and Scotland didn't even exist up to the present day. Next we're going even further afield to Japan. So I didn't know this before because my Japanese history is severely lacking, but starting in 1603, for around 300 years, Japan essentially closed itself to outsiders, developing its totally unique culture in isolation. And during that time, the inhabitants of the city Edo, which is now Tokyo, relied on the public city bells to keep time. And those bells were linked to nature, so in winter the hours were shorter and in summer the hours were longer. So, in this book, The Bells of Old Tokyo, Anna Sherman went on a journey through Tokyo to try and find evidence of those city bells, and along the way she spoke to loads of people to develop an understanding about the significance in Japanese culture of time. 
and the significance in Japanese language. So we only have the one word for time, but in Japanese there are a myriad of words, all with slightly different meanings. So it's a really interesting book, partly for learning more about Japanese culture, and also partly for questioning our own rigid understanding of time. And next, a book that takes us to cities all over the world, but I've come here to the USA section because the author is American. So A Burglar's Guide to the City by Jeff Manor is a really fun book. This is an architecture book, but that looks at a building through the eyes of someone planning to rob it. So Jeff Manor has spoken to FBI agents, reformed bank robbers, the LAPD, to form a really full picture of the city through the eyes of a burglar. So he looks at gaps in a museum's surveillance system, or goes back through history to look at home invasions in ancient Rome. If you're anything like me, and have watched Ocean's 8 a million times, and are planning one day to pull off a heist. This is your homework. And then back to where I started for the last couple of books I just grabbed from the shelves here. So the first one is The Secret Lives of Colour by Kasia Sinclair. So in this one, Sinclair has picked 75 different shades and hues, and it's really fun because the pages are actually coloured according to what she's talked about, and told their histories. So whether it's hair colour, or colours used in art, or colours used in language, like scarlet women, or feeling blue. I actually had a whole debate in a pub recently with some friends about which orange came first, the fruit or the colour. I guess it was the fruit, so if this book proves me right, I will like it even more than I already do. And finally, as a massive fan of all things Christmas and snow, I had to pick up The Secret Life of Snow by Giles Whittle, which asks questions like, where is the snowiest place on earth? Because I will definitely go there. And when will the last snowflake fall? Which is a question I don't even want to think about. But right before you click off, I wanted to tell you about one more book coming up soon that will be right up your alley if you like this kind of thing. And that is The Gospel of the Eels by Patrick Svensson. So this is part memoir about Patrick Svensson's odd relationship with his father who devotes his whole life to fishing for eels and part a science book about eels, which are actually the world's most enigmatic fish. We know almost nothing about them. Them. No one has ever seen them mate, nobody knows why they are born and die in the Sargasso Sea, and in fact, no human has ever seen a mature eel in the Sargasso Sea. Ever. So they are very mysterious fish, but everything you can know about them is going to be in the Gospel of the Eels. So I really hope some of those sound interesting to you, and again, I would love to know your favourite weird and wonderful non-fiction, because it's just so much fun having your eyes opened by these kinds of books. And of course, do come and check out Daunt Books, I will link to their website in the description box below, and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and hit that subscribe button for new videos every week. See you next time.